Hello and welcome again to another uh, episode here of the GD Express screencast with me, Teacher Marco. And today, uh, I will help you again with your GD RLA tests. Um, for today, it's going to be different because uh, from the past um, uh, test questions or exam questions that I've shared, uh, I have focused on the, the theory aspect or the grammar aspect, grammatical rules aspect of the tests. But today, um, we will work on the reading part. Okay, we will have a few questions that will test your skills in reading comprehension, your uh, skills on how to uh, elicit information and interpret ideas um, um, within uh, the context or within the given passage. Okay, so let's proceed with the first passage that uh, is provided. So on your GED test, again, you will be provided with a passage before you will uh, answer some questions. In this case, this passage is for questions one to six. Okay. So this is about, uh, it's a, a nonfiction or it's a fiction, uh, fictional work. And it's about... Um, the four men who struggle to stay alive after their ship sinks. So it's somehow like a fictional a chronicle of uh, events um, that happened. Okay, so let's try to read it. None of them knew the color of the sky. Their eyes glanced level and were fastened upon the waves that swept toward them. These waves were of uh, the hue of slate, save for the tops, which were foaming white, and all of the men knew the colors of the sea. The cook squatted in the bottom as he bent to bail out the boat. The oiler steering with one of two oars in the boat sometimes raised himself suddenly to keep clear of water that swirled in over the stern. It was a thin little oar and it seemed often ready to snap. The correspondent pulling the other oar watched the waves and wondered why he was there and the injured captain lying in the bow was at this time buried in that profound dejection and indifference which comes temporarily at least to even the bravest and most enduring when willy-nilly the firm fails, the army losses, the ship goes down. So we have four characters here, the cook, the oiler, the correspondent, and the captain. Each as each slightly wall of water approached, it shut all else from the view of the men in the boat. And it was not difficult to imagine that this particular wave was the final outburst of the ocean. There was a terrible grace in the move of the waves, and they came in silence, save for the snarling of the crests. Okay. In this jointed sentences, the cooked and the correspondent argued as to the difference between a life-saving station and a house of refuge. The cook had said, There's a house refuge just north of the Mosquito Inlet Light, and as soon as they see us, they'll come off in their boat and pick us up. As soon as who sees us, said the correspondent. The crew, said the cook. Houses of refuge don't have crews said the correspondent i as i understand them they are only places who where clothes and grub are stored for the benefit of ship, uh, sh uh, shipwrecked people they don't carry crews oh yes they do said the cook so they're arguing here 
um, because the cook is trying to suggest that let's go to the house of refuge. You know, uh, there they might see us there, but the correspondent is not agreeing with the cook. Uh, no, they don't," said the correspondent. "Well, we're not they yet, anyhow," said the oiler in the stern. "Bully good thing it's an onshore wind," said the cook. "If not, where would we be? Wouldn't have a show." So. They're, the cook is saying that they're lucky because it's an onshore wind, meaning the waves are directed uh, towards the land. In the meantime, the oiler and the correspondent sat together in the same seat and each rowed an oar. Then the oiler both uh, took both oars. Then the correspondent took both oars. Then the oiler, then the correspondent. So... They're taking turns, right? The captain, rearing cautiously in the bow after uh, Dingy, soared on a great swell, said that he had seen the lighthouse at Mosquito Inlet. See it? said the captain. No, said the correspondent slowly. I didn't see anything. Look again, he pointed, said the captain. He pointed. It's exactly in that direction. Think well, make it, captain. If this wind holds and the boat don't swamp, we can't do much else," said the captain. Think we'll make it, captain? <laughs> All right. So this is a scary situation if this happens to you, <laughs> to us. All right. The last thing that you could imagine is to be stuck and you know, having some problem with the boat you're riding in. Okay, let's go to the questions. Why did none of the four men know the color of the sky? Why do you think so? Because they were keeping their eyes on the waves, right? The first paragraph implies none of them knew the color of the skies. Their glance were fastened upon the waves. That's it. Very simple question. Right, they're uh, they, and were fastened. When we say fastened, they, their eyes were stuck on the waves, they were just looking at the waves. Now let's go to question number two What does the cook say? Good thing it's an onshore wind. If not, where would we be? So, what does that mean? So, an onshore wind would blow them in toward land i mentioned that a while back so the answer here is letter b how about for number three why was the captain depressed and dejected why do you think so of course because he was sad about losing his ship um okay Choice B is incorrect because nothing in the text suggests that a storm is coming. There's no evidence in the text. Choice C is incorrect because no one, least of all the captain, has given up hope of surviving the waves. Remember, they were all taking turns of, you know, up, um, um, the oars and also the cook was very optimistic. But the captain is not. Choice D is incorrect because the wind is blowing toward the shore, not away from it. And E? Uh, choice E is not correct since the correspondent and the oiler, not the captain, are rowing. The captain is in charge uh, of the dingy and its small crew. Mm. So he's not totally in a week he's still in charge of something uh, question number four later in the story the author writes it would be difficult to describe the subtle brotherhood of men that was here established on the seas there was a, this comradeship uh, that the correspondents for instance who had been taught to be cynical of men knew even at the time was the best experience of his life but no one said that it was so no one mentioned it which of the following is 
most likely the reasons that the correspondent thought that this experience was the best of his life. Why do you think so? Even if it's like a, they're in a difficult situation. <clears throat> because letter D, he discovered the value of comradeship. Uh, comradeship. Okay, and then the face of life-threatening danger. So the author clearly states that uh, comradeship of men struggling together to save their lives is the best experience of his life. None of the other choices is supported. Uh, and the correspondent never speaks of the captain as a wise man. So that is choice A, so that is wrong. There is no reference in the excerpt to life on the ship before the sinking. No. Uh, there's no evidence. Okay, and yeah, all of the other choices don't have evidence except for choice D. And number five. Which of the following statements best compares the correspondence and the cook's views uh, about the house of refuge? So, the answer here is letter D. Mm, the cook says the house of refuge has a crew, but the correspondent says it does not. So in the conversation between the correspondent and the cook, it is the cook who says that a house of refuge has, uh, refuge has a crew, while the correspondent contradicts that, right? So choice D is the correct answer. And lastly, question number six, how do you think the correspondent would react if the boat sprung a serious leak? He would probably be what? He would... Help the crew to bail out the water and keep the boat afloat. Why? Because there is no evidence that the correspondent would do... Um, oh, so... No, 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 no. Um, letter E is not the answer here. Mm, so he's not panicking, actually. Uh-huh. So he has been calm towards the all ordeal. So he would actually uh, tell everyone to jump overboard. Why? Because uh, he shows a practical um, approach. The correspondent is one of the most practical character uh, in this passage um a and become very frightened we don't have an evidence about that ignore all the orders no he is he appreciates uh comradeship so he is okay with working together leap overboard and swim away uh, no he believes in comradeship so that contradicts it and help the crew to bail, bail out the water and keep the boat afloat mm. oh yeah so the answer here is letter e and number six this is the nearest one to his character his calm and he's actually he wants to lead so this is a characterization question so the best answer here is letter e if the answer is letter D, like he will tell everyone to jump overboard, then it's like he's panicking as well. All right, so I think the best option is letter E because that's the most mindful thing that he will do. And as we all know, the, the correspondent is somehow very practical and he thinks about about uh the possible options so letter e is the best answer here okay so all right let's have uh another one another passage here 
How can photograph, one photograph have an impact? Okay, so let's try to read this passage. If you need some time to read, uh, um, more time to read, then you can pause the screen. Okay, these passages for questions 7 to 11. And it talks about Gordon Parks, uh, a photographer who loves taking photos of uh, Ameri uh, Americans who are working. So give yourself some time to think. This is the first part of the passage. You can pause your screen. And this is the second part of the passage. Now, let's go with number seven. So, why did Gordon Parks choose the American Gothic for his photograph? Because, what, letter C, because the photograph had a composition similar to Grand Wood's painting. Now, if you're not familiar about this, this is described in the passage. So, I'm pretty sure this is an easy question. Grand Wood's painting is the one described over the first paragraph. Okay, this part. So the answer in number seven is letter C. So Gordon Parks chose uh, the name American Gothic uh, because he admired Grant Wood's um, life. Uh, because the photograph had a composition similar to Grant Wood's painting. Okay, so letter C is the answer there. Okay, um, there is no indication that the photograph is dark and mysterious. No, so A is wrong. Okay, um... Or Ella Watson resembled the farmer's wife? No, so E is wrong. Although Parks may have admired Grantwood, so possibly D is close, but the text does not support that. Uh, the, or the essay doesn't clearly show that the images and the photograph differ from the images from the painting. Um, so. C is the strongest answer here. Number eight, why did the Farm Security Administration hire photographers like Gordon Parks? It's letter B because their aim is to produce photographs showing the conditions and life of American workers. And that's uh, the special, uh, uh, the forte of uh, Gordon Parks, shall we say. Number nine, based on your understanding of this excerpt, which of these generalizations about Gordon Parks' uh, work is most likely to be true? It's letter C. Again, Parks refers to take photographs of ordinary working people. That's, again, his forte. Okay, it is safe to assume that Parks continued to create photographic images of ordinary working people. All right? Hmm. So, yeah, choice C presents a valid generalization. The other choices make assumptions that, is, that are not based on evidence. Okay, the strongest one is letter C because it has an evidence supporting it. Number 10, how do you think Gordon Parks would have responded to an assignment to capture images of poverty in inner city regions? So what would be his reaction? So probably he would try to find a, a unusual but compelling images he loves taking photos of unusual uh compelling images compelling we mean is that, that giving a message um about his feelings okay so letter c is the best answer here he would have the same approach to uh, the new assignment american gothic so he would probably try to share his feelings again all right, so it's letter C. And number 11, talking about his career choices, Park said, I pick up a camera because it was my choice of weapon against what I hated most about the universe, racism, intolerance, and poverty. 
using what you know from the excerpt and this quotation, why does Park say that a camera is a weapon? Why do you think so? Because it can create photographs that lead to social and political change. Again, that's what he wants to happen. So letter E, because camera is a weapon, it can create influential images like the American Gothic. It's a weapon that contributes directly to social and political change. So letter E is the best answer here. Again, we're talking about social political change. Propaganda is a negative connotation to it. So D is wrong. A and B as well. Uh, both of which are providing negative um, connotation. So E is the best. C is nonsensical. <laughs> so how would that be? Like you take a photo and the person dies now. So it's nonsense. So the best option here is letter E. I hope that I was able to help you in uh, taking approach to uh, questions related to reading um, in your GED RLA test. And uh, I want to thank you for your time that you've shared with me today. And if you want to know more about us, please check us out on our website. That's PhuketPals.org or check the other videos on this channel. Uh, and also visit our Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash Thank you and see you on our next video. Bye-bye.